Hello, Jarvis. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Donna. How you doing? <laughs> I am wonderful. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I like to say I'm perfect. I decided in order to connect with people and or in order to share the amazing stories, I see all of my, my social media friends and all the people I've connected with. I've decided to con share some of those stories to encourage people. Um, you know, as you can see in the background, I have the word well-being. Yes, so yes. There are many people I see who are living their best life, but not just living their best life, but living their best life of well-being. Okay, I made the uh, cut. You made the cut. <laughs> That's it. You made the cut. And we'll talk about more of the cut later. <laughs> But you, you definitely made the cut. And so I'm inspired by your life. I'm inspired by your commitment. And um, I, I appreciate you. You are living your best life of well-being. And I want to talk about that and share it with people today. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure being here. I am excited that you um, even invited me. I'm like, oh, okay, this is my first interview ever doing right. something like this. But yeah, this is my first time. I'm excited. I'm, I mean... I mean, you, me, me, you, we talked over the years, and you know, we had a pretty good connection and vibe and things like that. So I'm excited, to, you know, just to do this for you and to help as many people as we possibly can. You know, I'm just an every, everyday person, nothing special, just Jarvis. You're humble, yes, yes, and and we 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 share a birthday month, so that's, we do. It's that's coming how up. Connected at first, right? Like coming um, up. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, Jarvis, I normally have a little bio to read, um, but I don't have a bio. So I'm going to just get into it with you. I know that you're a 10-year um, a Air Force veteran. Correct. And how long have you been out of the Air Force? Uh, since 2003. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are you from the DMV area? No. So I'm from a small town in Arkansas. Some of the things I would like to talk about, like, I, I wish you had on some short sleeves or something. So <laughs> keep, keep but um, one of the things that inspired me the most um, and has over the years, like this isn't new for you and it's not new me seeing you um, <laughs> constantly or consistently rather working out and you're committed to your workout and even lately i have loved all of your advocacy thank you i have loved thank it you. black lives matter your love expression for black women yes veterans, yes. veteran suicide yes. i i have loved all of that all that means a lot to me you know especially you know the back of black lives matter is, is is a movement it's just not a movement it's, it's who i am i'm, I'm a I'm black person you know my life matters and for for women i mean I, I just for our women for for the queen my mother especially you know my first love is i just love her and i can't see anything other than loving a black woman You're, you guys are phenomenal i mean phenomenal amazing i just you know i just can't get enough of so i have to rep anytime i get any chance i get hey i love you guys i love 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 black women you know so and then just been in the military and the, 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 the POW thing and the, and the military thing, it, it also goes along with the, with the Black Lives Matter because we have so many uh, veterans that died in the war that were left behind and things like that. So yes, it's, it, it goes hand in hand with the whole, uh, the whole thing. Black Lives Matter, I love black women, POW, so many of us were left behind, so many of us were just treated bad right here in the country. So. You know, and, and, and so many of us that were were lost right here in the country, that were murdered in this war, this war that we have, this crazy war that we have here in America. So it's more than just, you know, the military. It's, it's for all all my, um, all our people, you know, and that's how I look at it, so. And I'm, I'm, I'm with you, brother. I'm Thank you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Mega Sci-Fi Fraternity, yes, which yes. is our Founders Day is tomorrow. Root to the Q's. All right, all right. All so right. yeah, we're gonna be celebrating tomorrow virtually all over. You know, just just with us since everything is virtual and the COVID thing. So we'll be on. I'll be on the, more Zooms and more phone calls and all kinds of stuff. So our Founders is um, Founders Day is tomorrow, 
and we will be um, in existence of 109 years. Started right here in Howard, in DC, at Howard University, the first black fraternity at a black um, school. So we have a lot of um, a lot of pride, a lot of heritage, and we take it serious. And we just love the brat. You know, we just love it. So um, your vegan journey. My vegan journey. Right. You said to me you became vegan because of a bet. A bet. And now you encouraging like this recipe I just saw of this. Can you describe it? Because uh I'm gonna just say a jackfruit sandwich, but it was more than that. So it was um just a jackfruit that I, I seasoned with um some mesquite seasoning and some some liquid smoke and just barbecued it up and um Made some coleslaw with some cabbage and, and um, what did I have in there? Cabbage and... Let me read it. Carrots. <laughs> homemade coleslaw, sauteed mushrooms, onions, spinach, and a buttery vegan wine garlic sauce and your barbecue mesquite jackfruit. So, yeah, you... you you did it up on on uh, IG with the description. You playing it down on IG. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, and it looks so good. So I, I'm not a I'm not a cook. I'm not a chef. But I get in the kitchen and I just just play around. I mean, I was like, hey, what? what I wonder what this will taste like. I mean, what's the wine sauce? It got it's got to have wine in it. So I just play around with stuff. I'm, I mean. I just I get in the kitchen and I just grab stuff out my out my refrigerator and I just cook it up. And some things are good, and some things are terrible. <laughs> but I eat it because I, they're vegetables, and I know it's gonna do me, you know, it's gonna do me good. So I try to eat for um, for health and not so much of taste. But you know, the taste is definitely a benefit, <laughs> a benefit of eating. So yeah, the, my 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 journey into being a vegan it did start in a, with a bet. It was um, two thousand and eight. And I was working, and this young lady it was after Thanksgiving, and I remember coming back off the break, and I was she asked her, "Did you enjoy your Thanksgiving? Did you eat all the turkey? Did you eat all your chicken?" She's like, "I don't eat that." I was like, "Really? For Thanksgiving?" And she was like, "No." And I was like, "Wow, how did you do that?" She she challenged me. She said, "I bet you can't go a weekend without eating um, meat." And I did it, and then it came up on Christmas and all the Christmas festivities and. I was like, okay, I think I can make it through Christmas without eating it, and I did it. And New Year's came around <laughs> again, another big dinner and festival, and I made it through that. And after that, it was just, I was like, okay, I, 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 I've been, it's been two months now. I wonder, can I go three months? And okay, let's, if I go six six months, and after that, it was a done deal. You know, I just stopped eating meat altogether. I mean, not cold turkey. I was still eating at that time. Seafood. And um, Lent season came around, and I said, well, I got to give up something. Let me give up seafood. And that was it. And just about mm, maybe five years ago, I finally stopped eating the whole eggs and doing dairy and everything. So my journey was not cold turkey, but it was a, it was a journey. Yeah. It, was a, it was a journey, yeah. So now, I mean, it's, it's, it's fairly easy. In the beginning, it was kind of hard because you have those – those smells and those smells trigger the brain and the hormones and your taste bud and you want to eat it. So, but now it's just, it's, it's no different than, than it was back then. It's, it's, it's good. So it's beneficial. I mean, it, it, I, I've learned how to cook a lot of things, which is which it's exciting, learn a lot of things. So you look at stuff. So being a vegan, you have to research stuff. Yeah. that you never knew about, like jackfruit. I mean, the first time I heard of jackfruit, I'm like, what is that? The first time I ate it, I was like, that is poor pork. You are not going to fool me with that. <laughs> but you learn a lot of things about a lot of different fruits and vegetables and how to cook and how to put things together. So it's been very beneficial for me because when I started, I think at my heaviest, I was like maybe 220 pounds. But some people, they say, oh, that's not big, you know? I'm like, yeah, it's, it, to me it was. But, you know, I struggle with that because I didn't know. I didn't know. I, I've always been a person to exercise. But I never knew that diet played a, 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 a major part in that. Never knew. I was like, man, I'm exercising almost, you know, 
three or four times a, a week at that time, but I'm not losing weight and I'm getting bigger. You know, and people's like, oh, it's just muscle. I'm like, I have muscle my my butt. <laughs> yeah. But you know, after a while, you know, I, after I started doing the vegan, I think her name was Michelle. I think Michelle Jarrett, and we still talking. We still friends today. But um, I thank her for that. You know, because after that, the weight just came off. The energy shot to the roof. Um, I start feeling lighter. I mean, I, I just felt alive all over again all over again. I mean, it's like you eat something and you're not feeling weighed down. It's like, okay, I can go, you know, I can go. And the most, most people eat and they're just like, oh, I'm tired. I want to go take a nap. You know, I'm going to sit down and, and watch TV, smoke a cigarette, most men. <laughs> yes. But it was like, I, it was like I, I hadn't eaten. I hadn't eaten. So that felt good. That really felt good. My energy that was good to shoot up. To this day, I still enjoy it, you know. So that's my journey to being a vegan. So were you responsible for your family members trying the vegan diet and changing? Yes and no. Um, when I started, um, at the time I was married, and I started and I would cook, you know, I've always been one that whoever got home first was the person that was responsible for cooking dinner, right? So I would get home and I would cook for, you know, vegan meals or salads or whatever it is what I, I knew at that time to cook. And my family was like, you know, you don't cook for us anymore. <laughs> I was like, I do cook for us. Y'all just don't eat what I eat. So, I mean, eventually they, 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 they called home. At the time, my, um, my ex-wife, she jumped on board and she's now, a, um, you know, she's a vegan. And, um, you know, so, yeah. I won't. I won't say I'm. I was. I guess I was responsible for that change. Uh, my daughter's one of them. She's not a complete vegan. She still eats seafood, and both of them are. You know, they eat what I eat when they're around me. Yeah. I don't know what they eat. They're grown, so I don't know what they eat now. Yeah. 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 It was. A, that was a, um, interesting also because, like I said, they was like, "Ah, we don't want to eat that." I was like, "Oh well, don't say I don't cook." <laughs> but yeah so how did you learn to cook though I, I think that's a struggle for a lot of people uh, vegan and, style uh, vegan style yes so it started off with just don't eat meat I cook the same things I've always cooked but just don't season it or cook meat so if I was eating greens I would I would season them with the regular season and put some kind of uh, peppers in it or if I was eating beans it would be instead of ham hocks, it would be um, bay leaves. But I just cooked like my mom taught me how to cook, and I just stopped using meat to season stuff. So they asked me that. They said, "Well, how did you? you know, what do you eat?" I said, "I eat the same thing." So the same seasoning, just not with meat, you know. So my uncle asked me some years ago, and um, I was telling him that you know the thing about it is that we make meat the centerpiece of our diet. And I said, you know, we, we make this big meat thing and we, we say, hey, what am I fix with this chicken? What am I eat with this steak? What am I eat with this pork chop? But what if we just change that, that, that mentality and, that, and, and say, okay, what am I eat with these greens? Yeah. Or what am I eat with these peas? Or what am I eat with these beans? So that's one of the things I, I tell people that, that just die hard. They can't, just can't see themselves without meat. You know, just change it up, change your mentality. Say, okay, make... A vegetable your um your main dish whether it's a baked potato maybe, maybe it's a sweet potato maybe it's green and things like that so you know for me cooking it was just how my mom cook it just without meat okay. but then you get tired of those things i did and that ventured me off into the mushroom the oyster mushroom the jack fruits the butter squash the the nutritional yeast the um what else is there? The artichokes, crab cakes, and the palm, hearts of palm, and things like that. So, it's a big book. It was a big book. So many recipes. I, I think I maybe cooked one one thing out of that book. So I was like, eh, I just I just wing this thing. So and yeah. there's so many Facebook groups where um, you don't even have to really interact with people. You can just be in the group and learn their recipes. Exactly. Exactly. 
So you should go back through my little page and find that oyster mushroom recipe that I did with a um, with a curry sauce. Uh, I don't fry a lot of stuff, <laughs> so I just grill mine. I grilled it with a um, with a um, with a curry sauce, a curry wine sauce. So I'm learning how to cook with wine. So yeah, and it's delicious. I tell you, it's delicious. I, I'm not just saying that because I I cooked it, but it's delicious with some mashed potatoes. Oh, man, I will do a search. Yeah, <laughs> stuff in your page anyway. So I don't know why I haven't run across that already. Oh, I'm surprised you have. I want to talk now about the Cut Factory. So you're a vegan. You know, people always want to know where you get your protein. Ah. <laughs> uh. It's protein and everything we eat. Right, right. Yeah. But you work out, first of all, you're a personal trainer, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. I thought there was a story with that too. What what's the story? How how I became a personal trainer or what what where's my status right now as a personal yes. trainer? Yes, that that's the story. I thought there was a story anyway. Okay, so I am a personal trainer. However, I do not have any clients and I don't have any clients because I, it's frustrating. <laughs> I hate to say that, but it's not frustrating at the work. The frustration is because I care about people so much and it's frustrating when I see them not doing what they need to do to be healthy. So it just, it just became so frustrating to me to have my clients and I'm training them and I'm telling them, I'm not only training them, I'm trying to put them on a, uh, a meal plan and to come back and they're, they're just not doing it. And they, they expect me because they're paying me to magically make this, this life for them better. And it just became so frustrating. So I stopped um, having clients as a, a paid client and I just, just post my workouts on, on, um, on Instagram and Facebook. And before I was doing that, anybody that wanted to work out with me, and they said, hey, can you be my personal trainer? I was like, no, but I'm in the gym at this time. If you want to come and work out with me, you're more than welcome to. So uh, because it's, it's, it became an obligation, and I just care so much about them. It just came, it became frustrating. I'm like, why aren't you doing this? Do you not see the benefits in this? It's a reason why you're here, and I can't make it go away from you. You have to put in the work and do it yourself. So I just stopped. I just stopped as far as, as, as being um, a, a having paid clients. I just stopped. You know, I just figured that if, any, if you want to do it and you're really dedicated to it, to it, you just follow me and do the work. And I don't want to charge people and make them feel like they're doing it for me because you're not doing it for me. And when I was doing it, I never had clients more than six months because it was not my ideal to train you forever it was for me to teach you what you needed to do to sustain your own health and here recently i've been getting a lot of calls a lot a lot of calls and people have been asking me hey I, can i pay you i'm like no just pay yourself do it and, and just get healthy that's enough for me just just seeing you do better getting healthy getting off your diabetic you know the diabetes medicines or whatever it is that, that's got you calling me so yeah, that's 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 the payment that, that I, I I seek. Just just get just get healthy. Just yeah. get healthy, you know. You work out how many days a week? I try to work out at least four to five days a week. Well, maybe four to four to six days. I don't work out on Sundays. That's my day off. But sometimes I will. It depends on if I have a challenge going on and those days fall on, on a Sunday, but Normally, I don't work out on the Sundays. It's normally Monday through Saturday. And, you know, every once in a while, I might take a day off. My days off is just riding a bike for like 30 minutes. <laughs> but yeah, I try to do something every day because I look at it as, it's like taking a shower. It's a part of your health. It's a part of your, your, your health and wellness. So if I take a shower every day, I feel like I, sh I should be, you know, working out every day, you know? So um, it's just one of those things. It's, it's a way of life. and. Um, Someday when I don't do it, I'm like, ah, I feel sluggish. I feel like I missed out on something, except, except for Sundays. <laughs> That's my junk food day, my relaxed day. So, you know, yeah. What does junk food look like for you? 
On Sundays? If that's your only junk food day, just any anytime you're having junk food, what does that really look like? Pancakes, <laughs> cookies, um, okay. chips. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a nice balance. You're not. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, six days a week is is a lot of working out. Mm -hmm. So you you deserve a treat. And yeah, I, I love my pancakes. You, yeah, it's good to hear that you <laughs> you treat yourself. Yeah, I do. I do. So it, it sounds like you have a great balance. Um, yeah. How did your body change, your mind change after you started eating a vegan diet and and continuing your workouts? So the, the vegan diet definitely gave me um, a lot of energy. I mean, a lot of energy. Like now, I'm, I'm, I just finished eating and I don't feel tired. I don't feel sleep. I feel like, you know, I just woke up and woke up this morning, you know, I'm just full of energy right now. Um, so yeah, my energy is, uh, so here, here's the thing about me going into the gym for me going into the gym and being, uh, this, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a spiritual person. So my meditation is not traditional as, as everyone else. So the gym for me is my meditation. So getting up in the morning and going to the gym and when I'm doing my cardio is, is pretty, uh, uh time when I'm just blank, I'm, my mind is blank, I'm clearing my, blank, my mind, and I'm just meditating on the things I have to do for the day or, 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 or what I'm going through at the time. It's a way of clearing my mind, it's a way of giving myself affirmations. And I listen to a lot of music, so those, those lyrics really penetrate deep into my soul, and I try to um, plant those in my soul and try to live those words. For me, the gym is really a meditation period. You know, I'm, I'm just blank out it's, before I know it. It's, it's, you know, I'm like, oh, it's time for me to go to work or, oh, I've been in here long enough. You know, this comes out my meditation. So that being a vegan and, and having the energy to go into the gym and then being in the gym to clear my mind because mental health is very important to me. It's very important. And, and anytime you can find a place or something or activity whether it's running, whether it's meditating, whether it's yoga, whether it's just taking a drive. I, I want, you can find a place where it's just you, the silence, the voice, you, God, spirit, whatever it is that clears your mind, I say do it. And that's the gym for me. That's truly the gym for me, especially um, going through the time when my, my father, father passed. I mean, a lot of things were, became uh, clear to me. You know, when you hear people saying that, oh, they're still here with you and, and you know, that your loved ones are, that have passed on, they're still here with you. So that was a time that I really understood that whole um, concept of, of, because I felt my dad was with me, he was within me. And all the things that he have ever said to me and taught me were there with me. So being in the gym, it just allowed me to do that. Some days I'll be dancing and jumping and, and acting a fool and other days I'll be down in the dirt crying, <laughs> crying my heart out, you know, but it was a meditation for me. It, it really is. And to this day, it's still a meditation for me. You know, I try to, to get in the dark rooms and, and lay and listen to soft music and meditate. You know, and, but when I'm in the gym, it's, it's a blank and I come out of it feeling so much better, so much better every day, every day. So maybe that's why I do it so much. And the benefits from that is, I guess my physique, um, because I never went into the gym trying to be a, I didn't have a picture of how I wanted to look. Okay. I just wanted to be healthy. And I remember my doctor telling me one time, make good choices, let your health be the byproduct of your choices. Okay. So in other words, he was like, eat right, exercise, wear your seatbelt, quit fussing, don't argue, <laughs> you know, that whole thing he was telling me and, and let everything else be the byproduct of you doing, making good choices. So I think that's what this, that, that happened to me because I wasn't in the gym that, hey, I'm gonna get muscles, I'm gonna get the chest, I'm gonna get arms. Because to this day, I still don't concentrate on that stuff. I just work out, you know. You just got it. <laughs> got it. Okay. You know, that's, that's living your best life to me. Like, well, you know, like you said, the advice your doctor gave to you, um, you know, just do the right thing. 
-hmm. and allow that to be the byproduct of your health, your physical health, your mental health, yeah. you know, your choices with your food. To me, that's part of physical health, but it's also all of it is spiritual, you know, mm -hmm. in my opinion, it's all spiritual. And yeah. so you're doing it because you, you love your temple, you care about your body, you care about people around you. Exactly. And, and, and when I'm looking at you on, on Instagram or Facebook, that's clear. So the Cut Factory stands for, I don't know if you know this. Yes, please tell me. The so so the Cut Factory, I just came up with a name because like you said, I was being a personal trainer. I said, I got to get a unique name. I, you know, so I said, I came up with the Cut Factory. And then I, it, meant, it, meant, it, meant, it, meant, it meant nothing. And um, one day I was riding on a, on a bus. I don't know why I was on the bus. I was helping out with a marathon or something I was volunteering for. But it came to me, creating the ultimate temple. Oh, wow. So that's what the Cut Factory stands for, creating the ultimate temple. I love it. So, yeah. So it's not just, even though we see your cut body, it is not where you're going in to get chiseled. No. Like your diet is creating the cut factory or the ultimate temple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're, you're exercising, your state of mind. And exactly. Yes. Exactly. It's all of that. It's yeah. the nutrition, it's the health, it's the, it's the nutrition, it's the exercise, and it's the mental health. Yeah. Creating the ultimate temple because you got to have all of them to, to, to be there, you know? You can you can go out and work out and work out and work out and eat and eat and eat, but if your mental health and your 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 um is not there, you're going to revert back to doing some making some poor choices. Right. So you know that's why people go. I think that's why people go up and down, up and down because they're doing it not for themselves but for some other reasons. Yeah. Besides themselves, yeah. We have you have to learn how to love ourselves. We have right. to learn how to. I'm not when I say ourselves, I'm not saying as a community. I'm talking about I have to learn how to love me and you have to learn how to love you yes. because my, my my journey that i'm on now is that i i'm totally into loving myself you know i i, I believe in self-love and that's where i am right now so some people say oh you're being selfish it's like no self self-love is not selfish right it's me trying to love myself so you can see or you can feel the happiness within me it's like a, almost like a heater. A heater is just a heater. You know, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Make heat. Whether you walk in front of it or not, it does not care. But if you walk in front of it and you're like, oh, I like that. I'm gonna stay in front of the heater. Now you just got a benefit, but the heater's just doing it to make himself happy. You're the benefit of it, then be the benefit of it. Yeah. So we have to learn how to love ourselves first. Absolutely. And once we really understand what that means, I think we'll be better off. That's beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's the journey I'm on. That's my journey. Yeah. So now let's talk about how to motivate people. How or how does how do you stay motivated? How six days a week, mm -hmm. four to six days a week, every week. What can we do? My my motivation is kind of is is I'm very competitive. I've always played sports, so I'm very competitive, right? So I go into this place in my mind that I'm competing with somebody. And I always tell myself, um, somebody's out there beating me. Somebody's out there working out. Somebody's out there training hard. <laughs> so get up and go do it. That's my motivation, really, that's it. And, and, and I watch, like I say, when I'm in the gym, I have on Sports Center, but really I'm, motivate, I'm motiv um, meditating. The TV would be on, but something to pop on. And I'd be like, oh, I can do that. I can do that, you know? And that's, that's my motivation. That's one part of my motivation. The other part of my motivation is I don't want to, I don't want to see people sick. I don't want to see people overweight. I don't want to see people struggling. I don't want to see people die with diabetes and heart, heart diseases and, and all that thing. So my motivation is to show them that they can do this. You know, I'm just Jarvis. I'm nothing special. Ain't nothing special. I'm not a world-class athlete. I'm nothing, you know, I'm just me. So I figure that if I can show them that I can do it, then they can do it. You know, you know, I do understand that some people have some, some health issues and things, but the, the mind part of it, 
if I can do it, you can do it. So that's a lot of my motivation, especially my friends back home that are, that are overweight or that reach out to me. And like I said, um, a lot of people have been reaching out to me lately. And, and I'm like, you following me? He's like, oh man, please don't stop. Just, just, just please don't stop. Just, just keep doing it. So that's motivation for me. So some mornings when I don't want to do it, I just like, no, I have to. That's my motivation. So I have a two part motivation. I'm competitive. I want to win, even though I, I, I fabricate this thing in my mind that somebody's out there challenging me and, and, and press, you know, and, and putting the competition on me. But the other side of it is I just want to, I just want to help my, help my friends and my family and, and anybody that, that I come in their presence or they see me. I just want them to, to know that, hey, you can do this. It might look easy for me, but it's not. You know, some days I'm like, I'm not doing this. Halfway through the workout, I'm like, I'm about to stop. But I press on because I know somebody is is going to look at this. It is um in my IG or my Facebook or whatever. You know, so. And your yeah. future self is going to appreciate everything you're doing today as you're pushing through. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> so yeah, that's my motivation. That was my, that motivates me. So that's your motivation, and I get it. I I used to um one of the things I used to do to motivate myself is I would plan a trip. And like uh. going to a beach and I'm have on a swimsuit. Oh. I gotta go to the gym, right? Yeah. Or yeah. if I'm going on a hike, I can't go somewhere and go on these big hikes mm -hmm. and not train before the hikes. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> now with COVID, I don't have nowhere to go, but um, <laughs> So yeah, that was that was part of it, but now I don't I don't worry about it because, like I said, it's a lifestyle and it's it's the the byproducts of my good choices. Do you think you'll start personal training again? I don't know. My sister is 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 pushing me to. I'm I'm pushing you too. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't I don't know if I will. I don't know. I don't know. I, I won't say no. I won't say no. Okay. That's what's up. Yeah. So anyway, thank you. I've kept you longer than I expected. Um, thank you. It's been a long time. It has been. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed every minute. Every minute. So have I. So again, thank you. Anything you want to leave people with? Um, they can find you on Instagram at. They can the find me the Cut Factory. D A C U T Factory. All right. <laughs> The Cup Factory. Uh, they can find me on um, uh, Facebook, uh, Jarvis B. Bradley. Um, there's another Jarvis out there, which is my son. Um, but he's not Jarvis B. Bradley. He's just Jarvis Bradley. Okay. <laughs> and and I just, just like my doctor told me, make good choices and let your health be the byproduct of those choices. That's yes. great advice to leave people with. So that's what I would leave you with. And, and yeah. Just stay consistent and love yourself. Love yourself first. Love loving yourself. Self love doesn't mean you're being selfish or you hate people. It just means you love yourself enough to love them too. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. I love you, black woman. Love you, tonight, brother. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Founders Day celebration tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, to the bros. <laughs>